Test, test, one, two, mic check. Yeah, diesel automatic. And we are. You know what I do. And we are. Get big on it. Power to the people. And we are. We on the rise now. we are. We won't stop now. It's our time. Let's go. Hey, yo, I ride for the cause and I'ma ride till I die. Look me in the face and see the fire in my eyes. Big up to the people who plotted on my demise. Thought that I wouldn't survive, but now I'm on the rise. This is dedicated to the people devastated by the corporations who take our freedom to get a payment. Hey, today's April 16th, 2014, and I'm Drutter, an activist and vlogger out of Vancouver, Canada. I've got for you today a very special interview with American activist and hip-hop artist Diesel Automatic. His unique delivery, relevant message, and considerable talent has taken him from obscurity three years ago to a strong and growing support base, especially online. With the motto, Power to the People, a growing collection of high-quality free music, and an incredible team alongside him, Diesel has recently been compared to great artists like Lowkey and Immortal Technique. Diesel, welcome to the Dreader channel, and thanks for doing this interview with me. Uh, what's up, Dreader? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's really good to have you, Diesel. Um, I want to start by giving you a chance to tell listeners a bit about your background, since there's not really all that much out there about you. <laughs> You're right. I like, to, I like to keep it a little mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as rap goes, I've been, I've been rapping for a very long time. Yeah. Um, but in my, well, I can't say my whole life, but <laughs> the majority of my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, started off young, just basically in the streets, rhyming, freestyling, off the top, real freestyling, <laughs> like off the top of the head, just around the way with the homies and battling and uh, really, you know, I came from the era of, uh, you know, I mean, I, honestly, I can't, I can't say that it's not, that, that this, this new era is not the same because I really don't know what these young, young guys are out there doing in terms of like hip hop, but that, you know, I was, it was the early 90s, mid 90s, and we were, you know, real hip hop. I mean, with it, we had crews, and, you know, every crew had all the elements DJ, break dance, uh, graffiti, and rapping. And this is and, Chicago, uh, right? Yeah, this is Chicago. This is uh, north side of Chicago, um, and the first, the first suburb north of Chicago, which is, uh, it's, it's called Evanston. You know, it was all about, um, showing and proving. I mean, you had to, you know, I mean, there was no internet. There, there was the internet a little bit later, but it wasn't what it is. There wasn't social media. You couldn't, if you wanted to rap, you couldn't just record something on, on your home studio and put it out. And don't get me wrong, it's, I, the, you know, the internet is huge. It's a blessing for myself as well. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking the internet in any in any way, shape, or form or, or people who are doing what they're doing. I'm just saying it was a different time. Like, right? We had to, you couldn't, you couldn't say you were a rapper. You couldn't say you were an MC if, if you didn't, if you weren't out there rapping and freestyling and battling. I mean, first of all, at least, I mean, where I, where I came from and, you know, how we grew up in most places, honestly, um, at that time, if you couldn't freestyle off the top of the dome, nobody would take you seriously hmm. as, a, as an MC. If you couldn't on the spot spit some rhymes, no one would take you seriously. Like, that's how you earned a rap at first, was freestyling, because nobody was, yeah, people would write rhymes, and that was all good and everything, but, like, when we're in the street and, and wherever we're at, or at a house party, or even at, at school, in the hallway, or in the, or in the cafeteria, no, no one's trying to, you know, we're having a cipher. If you, honestly, like, Pete, back then, if you would have came into a cipher, a freestyle cipher, and spit some written rhymes, People would have would have would have pushed you out or, or beat you up maybe even in some in some wow. circles. So that's but, different you know, than today I, then because nowadays a lot of rappers can't uh, rap live at all. Right. I mean, and it was just a very different time. Like you really had to show and prove. And I mean, and for me too, honestly, I mean, it is what it is. But back then, uh, when I especially when I first started as a young teen, you know, a white guy rapping was not was not a, 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 you know, a regular thing, yeah. you know, anywhere. There was no Eminem to popularize it and to normalize it. There was not, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and um, obviously, you know, to me, race is not, not it, it doesn't matter, but, but it is what it is. At the time, it was like, 
I, in actuality, I had to prove myself a lot more than um, than the black guys did or, or the Hispanic guys did because it was just not, you know what I'm saying, any cipher that I would step into where people didn't know me, it was always like, oh, what you, what, you know, white boy, what are you doing trying to rap? You know, white boys can't rap. Yeah. And then, you know, I spit a flow and I just shut shit down and then they give me respect. Yeah. So, but that's, you had to earn it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and it was a blessing, honestly. Like, it was a blessing. I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way because it, it, it totally, you know, it totally honed my skills and made me, it made me the MC that I am today. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for growing up in that. And it was just fun. It wasn't just rapping. It was like, we used to, you know, we used to go out graffiti, you know, bombing, um, tagging, like go out late nights and tag up trains and train yards. And I wasn't big in the graffiti. My, my friends were, and it was just fun. And we'd have battles with other crews that it like, in my high school, it was us. We were the two biggest rival crews, and we, we had an all out war to the point where, and I mean, there was a lot of fighting involved too. And each crew had like gang affiliations, and mm. it was, you know, that's all a whole nother mess. But nonetheless, it just got crazy. It escalated to the point where the school got it, had an intervention and wanted to expel us, and it was just craziness. And then I formed a group with some other MCs from around the way. Um, that was when I was 17. I was a senior in high school, and we cut an EP, and um, right away just started to get uh, some pretty good exposure with, on, on the underground scene. Started doing shows around the Chicagoland area, um, and really just linking up with a lot of the out of the bigger name underground people at the time. I mean, we actually had a good buzz going in the underground. And that was like, that was a little bit, you know, it was different again. Like, there was the internet at that time. This was like 99, 2000, 2001. But like, you know, it wasn't, it, uh, it definitely wasn't <laughs> what it is today. So, but you know, it was cool. We did a lot of shows. I got, I got experience doing live shows. And then we split up. The group broke up. We had, we had our differences. And I went my own solo way doing, uh, doing music. And then kind of, you know, back then it was like underground, and it was like, I was young, so it was just kind of battle raps, underground, straight. Then I started to get, as I grew up, I got more, kind of, I guess you could say, into a, more into a life that revolved around, uh, I guess, the, the, the stereotypical things that rappers are, uh, uh, rap about, yeah. that they claim they're into. I mean, I, I actually happened to, you know, I, 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 I lived a certain lifestyle like this that that I, that I you know I rapped about um, and uh, so you know it's not obviously it's not something that, that I'm proud of at this point but nonetheless it's, it's it made me who I am so for those years sort of what led to you becoming um, activated as a raptivist is that when you went through some oh, events well, that drove you to you know now you're starting to try and make positive change in the world but you had to go through something to get to there so what you know tell us a bit about what happened there hmm. well definitely I mean I think everything that, that in my life that you know that uh, that happened led up to, to, to this very moment right now to for this sure very interview if you, if you know what I'm saying but yeah, um, yeah so you know just got caught up into in, in, in a life of you know um, just the life that I was programmed to believe was 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 the, the life that I, that I was supposed to live. Yeah. You know, all about money and um, getting money at, at, at any cost, and and you know having a lot of women and material things and for sure um, just ego, ego, and being you know being a big shot. And and it, I was greatly. Of course, like I, 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 you know, I put up the song "Simple Man." It explains, you know, I, I, my father was around and he was a provider. I'm not, you know, I never came from a, I didn't come from, you know, humble, humble beginnings. Granted, my father and my mother are both first generation in the country, um, and you know, my father was a janitor and worked as a janitor for years, you know, um, but. Uh, was was always a provider um, financially. I never, I was never. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it's like to be poor. I'll never, you know. I can only empathize. But, yeah. um, but he didn't provide emotionally for me. He didn't provide guidance for me. And um, I love him. I don't, you know. There's no. It's not when I when I speak these things. I don't, 
it doesn't come from a place of resentment. It just comes from a factual place. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't um, a loving uh, person. He yeah. wasn't a warm. He didn't know how to show his love and, and how to guide me and teach me. So uh, I turned to other places, to the streets, to friends, and to rappers. You know, I yep. mean, I was that's what I was into. So it's undeniable that for me that rappers influenced me and my, my, my way of thinking. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it all led to, and you know, now that's why I, 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 I'm so uh, passionate about, you know, um, the music because I know firsthand, I know no one can tell me, you know, because um, I know firsthand and I know I'm not the only one. All of my friends were in the same boat. Everyone I grew up with was influenced by the music that we listened to. We wanted to be those rappers. We wanted to be the gangsters that we saw on TV. We wanted to be the, the, the rappers who, who rapped about a lifestyle that they weren't even living. And here we are out here living that lifestyle. And what's it leading, it leading us to? Some to death, some to jail, some to whatever. Nothing good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I knew and I know now. And um, that's why I, I, I feel not only that I... I can speak on it because I, I lived it, but I have to. It's my responsibility. You understand what I'm saying? Because I went down a certain path, so hopefully other people won't have to. And I think that's that's what it's ultimately all about. Hmm. What are your goals now? Obviously, they've changed since those days. And as you you know, as you, we're talking about going through a lot of stuff uh, in those years. So, what are your goals now as a raptivist? I can't really honestly say that I have any long long term uh, goals. I mean, of course, I want you know, I, you know, when 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 anyone talks about um, activism and revolution and you know, change in the world, we want you know our goal, our long term, but our hope is a better word is that yes, a change will come and and the system will will change and there will be peace and, and equality and unity and all of these things that we all hope for. Um, my goals as a raptivist, as, an, as a person, as a person, my goal is to have a positive impact um, on myself, first and foremost, uh, because it all starts with self. Yeah. I can't, you know, we can't, we can't help others if we can't help ourselves, and I'm, con I'm constantly trying to help myself and better myself and I'm not perfect and it's a process but there's no re you know and people want to say oh well who are you to talk or when, when you're, you're no one's perfect granted and I'm working on myself and I'm bettering myself continually but there's no reason why in the process I can't try to help others as well and so my goal is just to help others which is a goal that I'm which is a goal that is always being accomplished Every, every single day, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the beauty of it. Um, I don't really, I don't have some type of goal in terms of like with my music to, you know, make some kind of a fortune or a living from it or, I mean, ultimately my goal is to help other people, help themselves. Cause I, you can't, you know, it's not even me helping them. It's me helping them help themselves, inspiring them in one way, shape or form. Um, opening their minds and their eyes to something, uh, you know, of course, waking people up, I, I, you know, it's great to have somebody be like, hey, yo, you know, uh, you woke me up, man, I, before I heard your music, I didn't, I didn't know about any of this stuff, I wasn't, you know, as into it, so thank you, and I get that, yeah. but it's equally as good to have somebody who's awake and who's aware of saying, yo, you inspire me, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? You let me know that there's other people out there. I'm not alone. Yeah. That's equally as good. And I see so many people focusing on like, oh, like they get frustrated because they feel like they're not waking people up. But it's equally as important to let the people who are awake and who are aware to know that they're not alone and to inspire them and to keep them going. And not just that. Yes, you know, we. I, 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 ha I attach myself to the results. It's, it's, it's a force of habit, but that's one thing that I'm constantly working on is detaching from the results and doing things just to do them. Because you never know, you have to just do it. Do things from a place of love. 
That's what I always try to do. Why? I do it because I love to do it. I believe in it. And I know that it's going to impact people. And I get people telling me all the time how grateful they are and how much I've inspired them and motivated them and, and, and changed their lives. But you know what? There are plenty of people who may not ever tell me, but it may affect their life. And you never know what what seed you may plant in someone's head that may one day grow into something amazing and beautiful. You understand what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. look at all the people from the past, Drutter, that, that, that have laid down these roots and that have just grown into something. And they're not even alive to know it. All the people who have influenced us. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to do, do what you believe in and do it without really attaching so much to the goals and it's hard don't get don't get me wrong i'm not saying that i i, I don't ever you know um and, I, and it's okay to get happy when you have some when you achieve some level of of uh success whatever that may be for you that's mm -hmm. okay of course like and me and sis uh synthesis were just talking about this today um with everything in life there's always different levels of success and a person could spend their whole life trying to keep getting to the next level and never be happy with the level that they're at. So it's like, you know, my main focus is to always be happy with where I'm at. Like, okay, this is great. Like, because honestly, there was a time not that long ago, Drutter, where I, I, all I wanted to do was, was do my music again. And I, I wasn't even awake and aware of things. And I didn't have direction. And I was lost. I was going... Like, I was going through some some serious shit mm. in my life, and I didn't know if I would ever even be able to rap again and to, and to, and to express my, myself and to share my talent. Like, so to be even just where I'm at now, and to some people who don't, who can't understand who, who, whose concept of success is fame and fortune and money, they, they think I'm crazy when I say this, but where I'm at right now is a dream come true. I'm living my dream because it literally was a dream of mine not that long ago. Just to be able to, just the fact that I'm here on, 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 on Skype doing an interview with a person who, who a, a, a great person who I've never met before in my life, but that I've connected with because of my music. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it's just... You know, I went off on a tangent because I have the tendency. <laughs> well, no, that's the best answer. You know, that started with I don't have an answer for that question that I've ever heard. Right. Um, that was really good. So it sounds like you um, are trying to be the best you that you can be, and in the process, you're using your talents with music right. and your skill with rapping to help others to do the same thing. You're inspiring, motivating, informing people. Um, so uh, you don't have a stated goal, really, but um, obviously you are making some progress at something, and I would say it's a positive thing, that's for sure. Well, thank you. And you summed that up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so um, hip-hop music and the hip-hop culture has a history of nonconformity and uh, often of empowering the oppressed, at least in its roots. Uh, do you agree or disagree with that? And uh, any comments? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree to an extent. <clears throat> um, I definitely think, you know, there's always been, a, you know, a social and political element of of hip hop. But at the same time, it's like, you know, hip hop. Uh, de I mean, definitely, there's, you know, of course, you, you look back to, you know, Public Enemy and X Clan and KRS One and. Um, even like, you know, Melly Mel and songs like The Message. And, um, of course, then you had Tupac later. And, yeah, there, there always has been. Um, but I think in comparison to today, the main difference is that, that back then there was, there was still commercial. I mean, the reality is, is that the way hip hop started was, was with partying. You know, it was a party, it was a party theme. It, it, you know, it started in the parties. It started to bring people together. So even just the act of, of it was partying to bring people together, to, to mm. unite people within the ghettos, you know, in, in, in this going through the struggle to give them some type of a positive outlet. It wasn't partying for the sake of just, you know, 
turning up and getting crunk or whatever these you know these people do these days mm -hmm. and just getting drunk and acting reckless you know it was more than that it was a party that come together it was fun it wasn't you know what i'm saying so but nonetheless um there was a, a, a it wasn't just social and political commentary in, in, in rap and hip-hop but the difference was there was a there was a much greater balance back in the days you know what I'm saying? It was a it was a balance, and now and and, and of course the, the hip hop was more pure in terms of uh, it was it was untouched by corporate America. Yeah, and that obviously that makes that makes the world of difference. Mm -hmm. That's where the imbalance that exists today comes from. Yes, it's corporate America. Yeah. But like the truth is, hip hop is is one thing. Hip hop is a culture, and that's the thing that people need to understand as well. Yeah, it's like. Um, rap is is the music of the hip hop culture, mm -hmm. but not all rap is ne is necessarily hip hop. You know, you, you, especially gotcha. now it's been taken, it's been it's been stolen, and turned into pop. Yeah, turned into something totally different. So, like, I believe that hip hop culture at its at its root to this day, you know, I mean, we can't we can't mistake what we see on commercial radio and TV for what hip hop is. There's a whole underground, you know, of artists like myself and, and many, many more who are in fact making making real hip hop. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Now, me personally, I'm I'm a very conscious, you know, MC, obviously. And like I I you know, I I understand hip hop is, you know, it's a culture and there's many aspects and I understand all of that and I know, you know, I wouldn't expect everyone to be like I am and to rap about the things that I rap about and that's fine. But at the same time, whether hip hop or not, even if somebody is like a hip hop rapper, an MC, they could still be hip hop and be underground and still be spitting some garbage. You know, they could mm -hmm. be skilled and have skill, and they could still be spitting some some negative, detrimental garbage. Yeah. And I don't care then about. And and the bottom line is, you know, and some people might might not like me for this, but you know what? I don't. In the end of the day, it's dead press said it. It's bigger than hip hop. It's bigger than hip hop to me. You know, you could you could say what you want about. Oh, Diesel, he's not a hip hop purist. I don't care. I don't care because this isn't, I'm not out here trying to be Mr. Hip Hop 101. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here trying to be, oh, I'm the hip hop purist, the hip hop elitist. Like, you know, I don't care. Like, no. the, the fact is, I came from the hip hop culture. Straight, I lived it. You know what I'm saying? Out there every day, battling, even having my little chubby butt on the ground trying to break dance. <laughs> you know, out there running from the cops because we, we're, we're spray painting and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I come from the hip hop culture, and nobody can take that away from me. Mm -hmm. So, but still, to me now, it's so much bigger than hip hop. I don't. I, I'm not like. To me, it's like hip hop is cool, but I don't even. I don't even need people to consider me part of the hip hop culture anymore. I don't. Because honestly, I don't. I rap sure, but I'm not. I'm not out there break dancing and doing all of this other hip hop stuff anymore. Right. I'm not. I rap. But what it is is I use I use rap I use my talent to be able to rap for something much greater. I've heard you say before that hip hop is like your weapon almost. It's your you know it's your force to to, to bring about your goals, but not necessarily your goal. Yeah, well, not not hip hop, but rap. Yes, rap. rap. Yeah, but that's what it is. Rap is like you know I've been I've been I've been blessed. I've been bestowed with this with this the, the, you know this Excalibur, if you will. Um, which is rap, you know, my talent for rap, and, and, and at, the, at the risk of sounding arrogant by saying it's 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 such a powerful talent, but hey, I believe it is, and a lot of people seem to agree. But regardless, absolutely is. I I have this talent, you know, and and I, I I've always had it. I mean, you know, I've, I've I've always had this talent. I've always I always thought. Oh, you know what? This talent is gonna get me rich. This talent is gonna give me everything I want. And then all this crap happened to me in my life, and I was left. I was in a position where I didn't. Now I I didn't even know if I would be able to ever use my talent again. 
which I felt was my, my, my purpose in life, my destiny. See, but the, 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 the thing is, I, I didn't realize that, you know, yes, that, that rapping was part of my purpose, but it wasn't to, to rap to get rich and famous. It was to do what I'm doing now. And the, the, what I had was this moment of awakening when I awoke and I learned about things. And I was in a situation, and quite frankly, I, I still am in a situation that a lot of people would, would, would consider compromising and might not might not even be doing what I'm, what I'm doing right now if they were in my situation. In fact, a lot of people, most people probably wouldn't. But I was I was confronted with, the, with this choice that I had to make. And I said, you know what? I know this truth and this reality about what's going on and about certain things that have happened to me in my life. And I stopped and I said, and I had this talent that I could actually use to help other people awaken and mm -hmm. learn the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get too into it because I just don't feel comfortable getting into the details of things, but I caught a break. But I made things happen to where I caught. No one just catches a break. People take risks and take chances, and, and then the universe, God, whatever you will, it gives you a break. Yeah. And so, I, regardless, I found myself in a position that a lot of people didn't have that same break, didn't catch that break that I got. I know the truth of all this stuff. I've been researching, I've been reading, I've been going through it, I've, I've, I've woken up, I'm awake. I have this talent, I have this sword of rap, and I'm like, yo, so now I can use this talent, you know what I'm saying, to fight against the very powers and the very system that, that, that I felt did a grave injustice to myself and to many other people all across the world, and still are, as we both know, or I could tuck tail and, 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 and give up on my talent, give up on my people, give up on everything. And I mean, to me, it was a no-brainer, but at the same time, it wasn't an easy choice to make because of a particular situation that, 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 that I was in, that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm still in. But that's what I talk about. That's why I talk about courage and, 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 and doing what you feel you must be done. Now I feel a lot more comfortable with my situation. I mean, even to, to, to be talking about something even like this, as vague as I am, is something I would have never done before. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but nonetheless, at the time, I had no idea. You know, I, I, was, I had been just living in, 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 in fear for, for a long time. And... I found my purpose, you know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and it was my purpose with my talent, and the two merged, and it gave me courage. You know, it gave me, it, it was, it was the, 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 you know, the love that I felt, one thing, for, for myself and for everybody, for wanting, for wanting to, 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 to help people, you know what I'm saying? And, and of course, it was, the, it was, it was just finding my purpose, and, and uh, and so I made the, I made the decision, and I haven't you know I haven't looked back since, and you know I still hey I don't you know what I'm saying but <laughs> like I, I I still we I mean none of us know obviously what could, if anything could happen to anyone any given day, but I'm not you know I'm not worried about those types of things anymore you know what I'm saying like because quite frankly I I you know I know that I have a much much greater purpose, and it's already being fulfilled every day. I'm, I, you know, I'm touching people's lives, and I'm, and I'm helping people. So you, you know, sure are. You know, it's like one person. You know, we say this, and people hear this, but it's the truth. You help one person positively. You, 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 you change. Yeah. Change yourself first. Help, yeah. help yourself. That's first. That's the first person. That's yeah. First. That's the first person. Yeah. You change yourself. You change the world. And after that. You, you help one other person. Like, I just the other day had had this this man, um, he wrote me, and 15-year-old son was getting in a lot of trouble, and um, and he was, you know, drinking and, 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 and doing drugs and ended up getting locked up. And once he got out, he said he started actually started shooting up heroin, and this wow. guy was, like, you know, distraught about it. And... Uh, and he said one day he had my CD on in his car and 
Simple Man came on, um, uh, you know, which is the song where I talk a little bit about my past and like, dealings with my father and things. And uh, his son heard it, and after that day, he would just he had been listening to it over and over, continually. And I'm not sure exactly how long this was, how long ago this was, or when this happened. But he said since that day, he hasn't touched any drugs or any alcohol and hasn't hasn't been getting into any trouble. Wow. So like, this was a message that, that that just blew my mind. Quite frankly, I mean, you know, I've had I've given I've, I had another guy just not a few days before this one tell me he uh, he was he was making a change from like living like a gangster lifestyle to a more revolutionary conscious lifestyle. And cool. He said that making that change was the most difficult thing he, he ever did and that he was even suicidal about it mm. because it was so difficult for him. And he said that, you know, my music was the only thing that gave him hope and was the only light that he found in that time of darkness that kept him going. You see what I'm saying? Like, these are, that's just two. I've had... Well, I've hey, had, I can add in my own. I mean, you've absolutely changed my life since I started... Um, listening to your music, but also talking to you and connecting with you online and stuff like that. Uh, it has been, you know, I've been changing for many years, but it has accelerated and helped certain parts of my own growth. So absolutely thank you for making the choice that you decided to make. And I I think it was the right choice, but um, you've yeah, clearly I reached a lot of people, you. including myself and a lot of people who watch this channel too. So thank you very much, Diesel. That, that, that really, that means the world to me, man. And, and you know, any, any, and that's the thing, I don't, like, of course, stories like that are a little bit more dramatic, like, they have a little more impact, but anyone, even what you just said, is no, is no less or no greater than any, anyone who tells me, hey, your music has inspired me, yeah. or motivated me, because the, the smallest change that you can help someone make for the better can blossom into something, you know, so much greater, so... And that's you know that's that's what that's that's what it's all about, man. And, and and we say it all the time. And in the end of the day, you know, no matter what happens to me in my life, like you know, if I if I die tomorrow, if I get locked up, if anything, I mean, I've 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 served my purpose, and and I've left something. I've left something. You know, it's like I have people. I have people who. who love me, who support me, who, you know, who will, who I know will carry that, that legacy, if you will, yeah. you know, it, 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 at least through my music, yeah. so, you know, I can't, and that's, and this, again, goes back to the goals, it's like, it's just being grateful for, for everything in this moment, for every, every, every step of the way, being grateful and enjoying it, and knowing that we are making a difference. Yeah, you know that is saying? an absolutely I mean, amazing it, feeling to know that you have had not only an impact already, but you will continue to have an impact no matter what happens from this point on. Exactly, and we all will. As you will too, and, you know. And, and that's the thing, people. People, you know, people. A lot of people don't understand, and they, they feel it's futile what we do. And then, of course, there are the, the people who, who who just want to get in our heads and who want to. Who want to make it seem like ah, what you're doing? You know, the the, the government paid trolls, maybe like yeah. that you'll see on YouTube that want to come and just or anywhere. You're you not know, getting anywhere. Like, ah, you're not reaching you, anyone. You guys aren't making any difference. Yeah. Of course we are. Every it all makes a difference. It all makes a difference. You do. Everybody does. Everyone just supporting people who are out here like you, like 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 you are, like I am. Just that alone is making a difference. If yeah. you're not actually yourself taking an active role in, in, in some type of active, but that is an active role. That's the thing, like, I, I, I want, and I'm glad to be able, like, this is my first interview, and I have so much I want to vocalize, because I want people to know, it's like, yo, activism is not just um, protesting picket signs, and it's not just rapping, it's not just... It's everything these days. Like, mm -hmm. people don't realize how important everything is. Everything. Like, people want to talk about social media. Ah, oh, it's just social media. No, it's not. It's life. Yeah. We, like, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Ah, oh, it's just so... 
apps. It's just social media. What does that mean? Yeah, people say, oh, you can't change anything by, you know, updating your status or whatever. But actually, it does have a small trickle-down effect, and everything will have some effect on people out there. Look, you never know. You never know who you can, who who might see a status, who might see a post, who might hear a song, who might read an article, who might watch a video clip, and yeah. what effect that will have on them. For God's sakes, anyone who says the internet or, or social media doesn't matter does not know what they're talking no, about. No, it's the game changer. Or, or they're or they're a troll. Yeah. Because the fact is, if it was not for the internet. If it was not for social media, about I I I I go as far as to say, about eighty percent of the people who have awoken in the last five years, if not more than eighty percent, it's because of the internet and social media. Yeah, I would Probably say so. Probably more. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm awake. I, yeah, it same was the here. Internet. Yeah. It was it was reading things, watching videos. That's and if it wasn't for those people before me who were brave enough, who, who thought, you know what, it does matter. It does matter. I don't care what people say. It does matter. And what about the people before them and the people before them? You understand what I'm saying? I know you do. But, and that's, that's and people want to say, ah, oh, it's just social media. Wait a second. Who, what does that mean? Does that, does that imply that your social media is run by some type of a robot? Is it not you behind it? And I think it goes for alternate media as well, not just social networking, but also the whole alternate media, getting your news from sources that aren't mainstream news sources and stuff like that. I mean, your news makes up what you understand about the world around you, you know, your intake of news and information. So where you're getting that really matters these days. Of course, definitely. And that's, you know, the, the, the internet, period. And I mean... I guess I put the emphasis on social media because uh, it's obviously the it's the most um, interconnected. It reaches you know? everybody, the sheep, right. the and awake people, people are, everybody. <laughs> if you want to exactly, call them sheep, exactly. Yeah. People are people are a lot more you know um, a lot more likely to like okay if they see something on social media or link or something let me click on it, as opposed to like going and searching for their own alternate you know news yeah. sources and things of that nature, yeah. which you know, I mean, it's like social media is because I and, and these are things that I know as well as you do, too. I mean, and I'm very active on social media and I see I see, you know, the impact that my posts have oh, on yeah. people and it's the things effective. that I post. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, on, on all of them, on, 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 on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I mean, Instagram's a, a one that I'm new to, mm -hmm. relatively new. And I mean, that one is like. Honestly, there's just a lot of activism on, on Instagram, and it's really great to see, and cool. people are really supportive. So, so social uh, media might be kind of like the front line of waking a lot of people up, and then uh, the alternative media is kind of a way to for people to keep on getting their news and information and dig a bit deeper. Exactly, there. Yeah. exactly. And I mean, social media is, it is the front line, because think about it, I mean, these days, who's going out there and, you know, I mean, social media, and when I say I, I include in social media like my music and what you do as well i mean because that's all part of it like i i mean it's not what it is you, you know what i'm saying like the music is, is 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 a huge part but also it's part of social media because quite frankly i'm at i'm, I'm in the right now i'm in a position where that's really my only way to to, to spread my music yeah. is through social media so you know, of course, it's different. I hope to one day get to be able to get out on the road and tour and to continue to spread the message that way. Um, but as of now, yeah, the social media is, you know, is, is, is how I do my thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely the front line, man. And it's, 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 that's where it's at, man. The, we're at a point where we need to wake people up. We need to, that's what it has to be. We need to just keep spreading this knowledge and sharing this knowledge and this truth and you know keep spreading it in hopes of waking more people up and of course at the same time inspiring and motivating those who are already awake yeah they go, you know they go hand in hand and the more they're inspired the more they will share and post and spread the truth and the message and 
just that's what we need to be doing right now. It's almost Everybody like planting has- seeds, and then once the seeds are planted and start coming up, it's almost like you got to keep watering them and caring for them a bit. You know, keep people motivated, inspired, educated, all that kind of stuff. And uh, well, to use a garden analogy, I'm a bit of a gardener myself. <laughs> It's a great analogy, and I mean, you know, anything, it's all, that's what it's about, growing, man, that's, get big on them, I mean, yeah. grow and expand, that's, you know, as an individual, and then as, as, as a people, you know, so, it's, uh, it's pretty tough right now, man, we gotta, that's, that's what people's focus should, should be on, because we just, we need, it's power to the people, but there's power to numbers, you know, and we yeah. need as many more people on board, awake, and it's getting there. I mean, people are. I, I don't. I could feel it. I, obviously, I don't. I don't know. How can I really know? But I feel at least through social media and through things that now, as compared to you know three, four years ago, when I first started to get um, involved online with with you know with my music and with everything, that I feel like a lot more people are. Are, uh, are awake these days oh, yeah. and, and aware than they were before. Yeah, I feel it, yeah. And I mean, if that's not because of social media, and they, it's sure, it sure isn't because people are out passing out pamphlets and flyers, I, you know, I, 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 it's, it has no. to be social media and the internet. So, it I is. mean, yeah. yeah, that's where it's at right now, man. Yeah. And everybody, you know, I urge everybody, I try to all the time, like, and encourage them, like, Yo, do it, do it, do it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just keep posting, keep sharing, keep spreading. It doesn't matter how many followers you have or whatever. Like, I just knew that I had to do this. I had to use my talent and put this message out. I didn't think about, oh, are people gonna hate on me? Are they gonna? I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I just did it and I just put it out there. I think the message almost sells itself. It's so it's such a strong message, and the information is out there. Like you said um, at the beginning of one of your songs, you don't have to trust me. Go ahead and look it up. It's all there. This is all known information. I'm not, I'm not spouting off, you know, gibberish here. This is, these are real facts. Um, So all we have to do is bring the message out there, make people aware of it, and help them to accept it, and then to you know take that next step. Exactly. You're often very vocal about the differences between your message and the message or non-message of rappers the mainstream elevates, who generally promote materialism, violence, discrimination, and distraction from real issues. But even within the small community of hip-hop artists who are awake and rejecting those themes in their music, your approach is unique. Your thoughts? Uh, Well, first, thank you for... uh saying that my approach is unique. I mean, granted, unique may not always be a compliment, but, <laughs> but I, I take that as a compliment. So, uh, And I don't do it to be acknowledged. I do it because it's what I believe in, but I put so much effort into really maintaining my uh, integrity and, and, and what I believe in and being very just aware of everything that I, because everything that I rap about and what I say and the words I use and I'm growing constantly, and I'm getting even more um, into it. So it's like it's a very consistent message I find in your music. Yeah, yeah, consistent and um, extremely consistent. Yeah, thank you. I'm not perfect. Nobody is, but I'm I'm trying, and I don't. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with. We're all hypocritical to an extent, mm-hmm. and but there's different levels of of, of hypocrisy. You know what I'm saying, Drutter? Like, um, here for example, I'll give an example for myself. Uh, um, I definitely, you know, think um, GMOs are bad and these things and, 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 and these companies like Coca-Cola and, and, you know, great, you know, it's bad for your health and we shouldn't be supporting these corporations. We know that. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes I have a Sprite. I bet that sometimes I like to have a Sprite. Yeah. I know, I know it's bad, I know what it, I'm contributing to, and I'm working on getting myself to the point where I'm not going to ever have a Sprite. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But sometimes I like to have a Sprite. And that's, to me, that's a very small thing. You know, and I'm not saying it makes it right. You know, a lot of, oh, Diesel, you're a hypocrite. Like, listen, none of us, none of us are perfect. None of Unless, unless you're, you're off the grid, unless you're living off the grid, 
You understand what I'm saying? Flipping off the grid, you're, you're in some way, you're going to be contributing. And even and then, because where were your solar panels made, etc.? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so if we have to be perfect, completely perfect in order to speak on things, then no one's going to ever speak. That's right. the bottom line. You know, we all, it's about, it's about doing enough positive and enough good to counter, you understand what I'm saying, the negative that we do. I mean, even just using computers and, the, and, and, and social media, we're contributing to those. You know, I mean, we know who owns YouTube. We're both active on YouTube. We yeah. know who owns it. Yeah. But why are we using it? We're using it to spread a message. We're using it for much good. A good example. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, yeah. it's a compromise and a sacrifice that we have to make. There's a rapper in the, in the, in the underground. I'm not going to name names. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to say what it is. Yeah. Now, this person made a song about sweat chops and, you know, these, these things. And I know this is, a, this is an underground artist who, who makes money. Okay, now, this dude made this song. It was on an album. He made money. And he was in a documentary where you see him going into a store and coming out with boxes upon boxes of Nike oh. Air Jordans. Oh. So to me, that's like a level of hypocrisy that I, I don't, I'm not condemning him, but at the same time, that's like a pretty drastic difference between getting a, buying a, a, a can of Sprite once in a while. You know, maybe, hey, maybe if I made a song, <laughs> a song dedicated to a, a total anti-Sprite, <laughs> anti-Coca-Cola uh, song and yeah. then took all my took my money and went out and bought thousands of dollars worth of sprite <laughs> i don't know but you know but to see a dude you know make this money you know and, and and from a song specifically talking about you know sweatshop labor and how it's messed up and then to go out and spend this money in the, mm. in the, in the name of sheer vanity that's hypocrisy uh, that could have been easily avoided on his part right, it sounds like, like. <laughs> and granted and granted, a, a sprite can be easily avoided too, and it mm -hmm. is. Like, I, like just using that as an example, I rarely do I drink it. But again, once in a while, I get a, I get a can of sprite for fifty cents. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, um, but yeah, that's like sheer vanity. That's like I, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's just, I guess there's just different there's different levels and different devils, like they say. But you won't see me wearing any name brands or. You won't see. I don't. I don't buy that shit. Like, I have. Look, I, I'll be honest. I have some. I have name brand clothing that I bought years ago that I that I'll still wear to the gym, for example, yeah. or just because I don't have money to buy a whole new wardrobe. Yeah. And the clothing is still good. I bought it already. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna burn it in in the name of you know. In that would be kind of backwards, kind of wouldn't anti, it? Anti-consumerist uh, statement. <laughs> yeah. like, Anti-consumerist like, statement by burning clothing that's perfectly good. <laughs> right. I mean, I bought it already, but I yeah. won't buy any more. No. I won't, you know, I I won't buy those brand names, and I still need clothing. And of course, it's difficult. It's hard to find clothing like that's not, you know, sweatshop made. And I realize all of that to be very a conscious consumer. It's difficult. And that's one thing, but it's another thing to go out and to just splurge money on these material things, especially when 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 you're speaking against them. Mm -hmm. It's just I, I I mean you know I don't know it's it's and then to, on top of it you're not only are you spending your money on it you're promoting it yeah you know and that's a whole nother level you're promoting it I might I might I might buy a sprite but you you'll never see you'll never see diesel automatic. With a sprite in his hand in a video <laughs> or anything of that nature. Yeah, like, we, we have to I'm say here that no advertising yeah. dollars were accepted in return for any product mentions here, Sprite. Yeah, you should, you should beep out when I say Sprite. Beep it out. <laughs> people will really wonder what's in there, though, <laughs> if we beep it out. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we all do. We all, we all, we all, you know, do things that, I mean, we all do. Just using money, obviously. We all we all contribute to the system. It's, but you know, there's a big difference between you know what we eat and what we need, and just going out and spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on clothing so that you could have so you so that you could have a status, so that you could have a symbol of your status. Mm -hmm. So you could say, "Ah, oh, look at all this money I made 
from what? From talking about how money's bad or yeah, how that's a materialism trap. Yeah. is bad. Like it's just crazy, man. I, I can't. I don't. I don't know. You know. I mean, again, I can't. You know, I'm not. I'm not in any way trying to put anybody down. Or we all. We all. We all make mistakes, I guess. Or we all. Well, you, know, you strive we for consistency in your message. You, no one can get to a hundred percent, but you're striving for consistency anyway, and well, that comes for, across. I strive for it in, in my life, yeah. first and foremost. Like yeah. I really do. I try. I try my best. Like, and there are just certain things that I, I feel personally, on a personal level, that are, are just unacceptable. You mm -hmm. know, and and we all have guilty pleasures, and we all have little vices, and and you know what. And maybe one, maybe one day we won't. You know, my goal personally is to work on myself to where I could get to a point where I, I, I can let go of all that. But it's all a process. Yeah, you know, it's all exactly. a process. Yeah. Nothing happens overnight. You can't, I don't care. You wake up, you, you're not going to overnight drop everything that you've done all, your whole life, everything that's been programmed into you. You're not going to just drop it overnight. No. But It takes years, I think. Right. But the bigger, it's kind of like anything. Like, you're carrying around all this baggage, right? You're carrying around big, huge baggage, luggage, little bags, little... This is all this baggage from the years of your programming, mm. you know, within the, within the system, within the matrix. And when you finally wake up, okay, you want to drop the baggage. The first, the first shit you're going to drop is the biggest, heaviest shit. You know what I'm saying? Which, it, it, from the way it went for me, at least, was like... The, the, the materialism, the need to the need to impress others, that you know all of these things, like because that's like the, to me, I don't know, that seemed like the most, that seemed just like the easiest, yeah. most logical, no first brainers, step. Like, yeah. All right, I don't, I don't, I don't care about these, these, you know, and trust me, I used to be, I used to, I mean, you know, I, I grew up in Chicago, like in the era of Jordan, and we, it was like, if you you had to have Jordans, you know what I'm saying, like. Mm. Jordans, Nike Air Force Ones, like you know, all the all the all the designer, whatever hip hop shit that was trending in hip hop. So I was big on all of that, you know, and you know the cars, and jewelry, and no, all of that just just meant nothing to me, mm. nothing, and not even it didn't even mean. It, it, I think it's something more spiritual behind that, quite frankly, because yeah, of course, it's part of it is I don't want to contribute to these companies. But also, it just became like, I don't need that shit to represent me. That's not who I am. I'm not, I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need anybody else's product or anything placed on myself to, mm. as some type of a status to represent who I am and what my worth is. Yes. I know my worth. It's almost you like a placeholder saying? for your actual value or an actual message. And you just put that in there instead of having something real to say. It's like, well, I'll just have that default message of telling people to conform and to buy a certain brand or whatever. Exactly. It's, yeah. We spend big money. We spend all this money on these products that are marked and labeled so that we could have some sort of a status. But what we're really doing is we're paying money to be walking advertisements for these companies. They're mm. laughing straight to the bank with that. Yeah. And, like, when you think about fashion, for the most part, it's like one of the only businesses or products that I that I can think of really where they your people are liter, literally paying to be advertisements for them. Let's say someone's trying to sell you a bag of weed. I right? they they you, you know the weed costs them, you know, I don't know, they they get it in bulk, maybe it costs them two dollars for a gram. So normally somebody would sell that for ten dollars and people will accept that. So now imagine this person tries to t turn around and sell it to you for, you know, even twenty dollars, with a, a, a bag that everybody knows is worth is, is is can only be sold for ten at tops. Every guy's gonna be like, man, are you crazy? You trying to play me? Like you you gonna sell you trying to sell me a bag for? Fuck is wrong with you? Slap Never a name brand on there and someone will buy it though. <laughs> hey, yeah, no, nah, yeah, let them if they could put that bag of weed right on their fucking forehead with a name brand on it, they'd buy that shit. But walk around proudly with it. Oh yeah, I'll pay thirty for that one. <laughs> right, but, but but that's the point. Like that like people pride themselves on, on, on being being foolproof. Yeah. You know, like you can't fool me, you can't play me, I'm a hustler, I'm this and that. Like you can't <laughs> hustle a hustler. Really? 
<laughs> Look at these three hundred dollar shoes. <laughs> yeah, go not to go wait your ass in line for about ten hours to get them. They give us uh, give us all your whole paycheck. You know what I'm saying? I'm no and sucker. We, uh, yeah, and what are we gonna give you back? And give us your whole paycheck and and be a walking fucking advertisement for us on top of that. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like from any any angle you look at it, and not just that. I mean, quite frankly, if if, if we're gonna get if you know. I'll take it to a whole different level. If you even trying to be fly and you trying to be cool and all of that, like, what is so fucking cool about having the same pair of shoes that millions of other people have on? No what idea. What's so cool about that? No idea. It's a contest. That's all it is. It's a contest. Oh, I dropped this much money on the new Jordans, on the new this, on the new that. I could get that. I could get this. I had them first. I... It's nonsense. It's yeah. all a, 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 a about status. It's very close-minded. Status. You know what I'm saying? You want status? Make your build your status around your character. I don't care what you wear. And the truth is, no one worth ha spending time with, or getting to know, or having any type of relationship with, is going to care about what what pieces of cloth you use to cover your body with. You said their character, and then the next line you said, care what you wear. Uh, maybe we can work that into a rap at some point, but anyway. <laughs> to, <laughs> to go back on the, the question we started there, um, you were saying, uh, well, I was saying, I guess, that I noticed consistency in your message big time. Oh, yeah. Um, another thing I noticed about your, your particular music, um, not to be a... Uh, ask us or whatever, but I'm pretty sure I've heard almost everything you've come out with in the last four years, and I, I notice for one thing for sure: no matter how um, the music itself is quite upbeat and quite usually um, powerful sounding music, your voice is very powerful and uh, you know even gruff. Um, and the way you um, present it is very forceful in a way, but your music is still very positive. The lyrics, the message, and you hear it when you hear it and actually listen to it you just get that positivity feeling and that's something that I don't get um, listening to even some of the other um, rappers even within your group it's just yeah. every track almost every track has positivity in it that's what I noticed for sure oh, thank you. I guess another one that I could say is that I, um, your music doesn't really promote religion as uh, a solution to the problems you know it's either there or it's either here or there and you accept people um, who are religious and you accept religious yeah. beliefs, but that's not your focus. You don't promote that as the solution to the problems that we're facing right now. Right. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, in terms of religion, I, you know, religion is, it, it's like anything, you know, it's not, it's not, um, it could be good, it could be bad. That's the way I view it, you know, it's like anything. It's taken to an extreme. I mean, you know, if religion helps people help themselves, if it helps them, and if, if it gets them on the right path, on the righteous path, and, and has them do good by themselves and, and by others, then that's a great thing, you know what I'm saying, and I, I can't knock that, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, I mean, you know, now of course there's radical extreme, you know, uh, religion that obviously is not, doesn't do anyone any good, also I guess when, 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 when you see religious people who, uh, who try to kind of impose that onto others you know like i don't i don't really vibe off of that either you know it's like great you could you could like you could spread your message and but i, I don't really believe in saying like oh if you're not you know if you're not a follower of islam or of christianity or judaism or anything like that you're gonna go to hell and you're not worthy of, you know, God's love, or, you know, these types of things, like, it's cool, you want to, you want to, you know, you want to be religious, and you want to um, promote your religion in a, in a, in a, you know, in a positive way, and, and tell your story and all of that, but to start to, like, you know, condemn other people for not following your beliefs is just not something that I, you know, that I can ever really get down with. Yeah. I notice that a lot of time with religious 
um, stuff. It, it can be positive or negative for the person, for the individual, but a lot of times um, some of the religious stuff is like, well, if you eat this, you know, everything will be better, or if you don't do this activity, then everything will be better, and it's almost like taking the place of other actions that are, you know, actually more important or actually would have a more positive effect on the person and on um, their community rather than, you know, like, well, hey, if you eat this food on this day, you're okay. And that actually really doesn't right. have that much, at least in my opinion, effect on anything. Right. A lot, a lot of superstition, I guess. It's, it's, yeah. Don't tell me if I don't eat it that I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not worthy or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be saved or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't put that on me. You know what I'm saying? So, and see, that's the, that's the thing, like, with, when it comes to, you know, the major difference, like, I think when it comes to just, because I'm very spiritual, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm very spiritual. Like, my whole journey, my whole awakening started with spirituality. You know, it didn't start with politics and with, yeah. you know, um, social themes and, and issues. Um, if I didn't have my spirituality um, to balance me out, like, I, I'd probably go crazy with, with all of the heavy content that we deal with, mm -hmm. you know, but um, it's my spirituality, uh, my, my spiritual beliefs and, 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 and that that keeps me grounded, but like, I don't believe in, 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 in hell and heaven, and I don't believe that you know what I'm saying? That, that if we don't do certain things, and if I if I eat pork as a as a Muslim, or that I'm gonna go to hell, I, I don't you know I don't believe in any of that stuff. My beliefs aren't on, on about that. It's like no, but at the same I, time, I think both you and I would fight for people's rights to believe those things and to do those things. Um, you know, we believe in freedom above really anything else. So if that's what someone is gonna do, that's what they're gonna do, and we will fight for their right to do it. No, no question about that. That's a, that's great. I, I love you know. I mean, in the end of the day, you know what? Hey, people got people have the freedom of speech. They could tell me, hey, listen, buddy, you're not doing this. You're not really, you know, you're gonna go to hell. I mean, yeah. of course, everyone should have the right to, to, to practice what they believe, and that's that's freedom. And you know, but um, and and it can never, it should never be taken away from anybody, no matter what the you know, what the circumstances are. Look, Jesus, what he stood for and all that, he was revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? Off jump, like yeah. Jesus was, was was a revolutionary figure. Whether he's real or not, I don't I don't know, and quite frankly, I, I don't care. Yeah. But it's been so many thousands of years and those religious texts have gone from hand to hand, from person to person, and it's just it's too much for me. It's too much for me as a as an individual, as an independent thinker, for me to accept those scriptures and thoughts knowing that they more than likely but even just the chance that they were compromised in any yeah. way shape or form yeah it's too much for me you know what i'm saying I, I just i can't do that you know i need to i'll take i'll take parts of the uh, parts of, of religious teachings and i'll apply them to my own spiritual beliefs you yeah know for what sure saying? so i mean there's good in all of it i feel you know i, I got a lot of um friends and supporters who are who are religious people and mm -hmm. they're some of the best people I know yeah you know what I mean and I, and I love them and I respect their I respect them something I've noticed about activists is they struggle with acquiring the resources they need to do what they do most like you and I give of ourselves for free because we believe that strongly in our cause but sometimes it takes more than just one person's time and effort to lift a project off the ground recording high quality music and video can be done cheaply but not completely for free. We don't have the backing of corporations, governments, or bank loans. And I feel we're doing some of the most important work there is to be done, but many of us are struggling to cover our costs. And I said in a recent video of mine, I know guys who are flipping burgers so that they can, you know, <laughs> participate in a revolution on their spare time. It's, it's kind of strange, but that's just how it is. I mean, um, I've heard you mention that you don't do this for money, but without money you can't really get much done and right. you know you're not trying to get rich yourself you're trying to do it for the cause and I know that you enabled download of your latest singles on iTunes starting with they don't care about us and you're giving your listeners a way to donate a buck or more but at the same time you ensure that the track is available for free 
to anyone who wants to hear it as well. So even asking for optional donations is often pounced upon as a sign that the activist is greedy or has sold out or that they are somehow dishonest or fraudulent. Why do you think people have such a hatred for those of us who give all we've got for the message and ask for financial support, not for ourselves, but to further the cause? This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and I think, you know... Well, first I want to say that anyone who uh, has a problem with, uh, you know, activists and people, um, you know, asking or even charging for, for something that they provide, uh, is just not a real supporter of what, of what that person is doing. And that's, that's, you know, and I know this, I know this because my biggest supporters jump at the chance to, to, to help me out financially. My biggest supporters, ironically, the ones who I would give everything to for free, you know, I mean, I give everything for free pretty much anyway, but you know what I'm saying, yeah. are the ones who would, who would, you know, buy everything, who donate, you know, get buy all my merchandise, like, you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. then there's, you know, there's people who, I think there's different levels. There's a lot of ignorance behind the issue, first of all. And by ignorance, I don't, I don't mean that to be offensive to anyone who, is ignorant on the issue. It's, I'm not saying it as a put down, it's just as a factual statement. They just don't, don't know. Right, when you don't know about something, you're ignorant to it. So yeah. what, it, what it is, is we all live in, in, in society. We live within the system. We all use money. All of us. Yeah. There's not a single person that we know of. I don't know, maybe somebody knows somebody, but in, in, in the realm of, for me, for example, Everyone that is a fan of mine uses money. If you have a computer, if you have, if you're online, if you have a, you're using money. We have to. Okay. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. So we all use money. That's first thing. Second thing is, to live within the system, we need money. We need to earn money. Okay. Where do you earn your money? Let's 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 ask that. Ask yourself that. How do you earn your money? Okay. Now, some people work at a store, some people work for a big corporation, some people work at McDonald's, some people sell drugs, some people work at a bar. Anything you're doing, I don't care, I don't care. Anything you're doing, why is that okay? But it's not okay for Diesel Automatic or for Drutter to want to make some money from what they're doing. Yeah. From actually, from from doing in actuality, by being up myself, for example, or any independent artist like this, activist and activist, I'm independent. I'm so therefore I'm not. I'm I'm with what I do. It's as little in terms of job wise. It has as little to do with the system is almost anything you'll, you can find mm -hmm. when someone is independently working. I don't work for any company, any corporation, any business, because all of those companies and corporations and businesses have, have their toe or hand or whole body within that corporate world. Yeah. And by working for them, you're contributing to that. Yeah. So me as an artist, yeah, okay, I still use money. I still have to have a bank account set up. I still have to use the internet. Great, fine. But nonetheless, I'm working as an independent person outside of the system as much as possible. Plus, I'm putting out a very, I'm, I'm using the system to fight against the system. Respect. Now, it wouldn't be right for me now to want to, you know, want to just all uh, have it be all about the money and ah, uh, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get rich, you know. First of all, for anybody who knows me, you know, you don't have to know me personally, but if you know anyone who knows how my 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 level, my my caliber of rap knows. Listen, if I was trying to get rich, if I was really trying to make money. I would not be rapping about this shit. That's right. I have the talent. I got I, everybody knows that. I got the talent. If I wanted to, I could flip the switch and start making start making commercial crap. Mm -hmm. Make a lot more money. At this point, 
and when I started rapping, you know, when I when I really start, let's say, not because I really didn't start like really pushing my music until about maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, really pushing it. Like the other stuff, I just put out on YouTube and let it do whatever it did. Yeah. But when I start, if I would have started then, really pr putting out commercial music and promoting it. I think I'd probably already be making a living from it. We wouldn't be having this interview either. Exactly. You know, if I wanted to be making money and making making a, a, a whole bunch of, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be diesel or diesel automatic. It wouldn't be get big. Like, it wouldn't be power to the people. Yeah. It'd be bling bling get money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's not the case with me. But there's nothing. There's there. First of all. Of every, every, every one who supports, if you support something, you support it, that means you you want it to keep going. Yes. Now, I'm fortunate enough to, to be able to have have a little extra money to be able to invest into into my music. But that's not it's not gonna be that way forever. Because I'm I'm in a minus. I haven't where you know, where I've I've yeah, I've I've gotten money from donations and from merchandise and, and some of the some of the song sales and I'm forever grateful. I'm still in a minus for, from what I've invested oh, into yeah. you know into making the music, into the videos, yeah. to all into promotion, all of that. So there's gonna come a point where, huh, you know what I'm saying? A diesel automatic can't he, I can't really be investing in in, in in my music like that anymore out of my own pocket. It just seems so like it, such a crime to me that people with talent and motivation and the right message can be told to shut up. You know, what are you asking for money for? What do you need money for? This should all be free. You should do this for free. Don't you believe in doing stuff for free for the people? And people like you, who could be, you know, like as you said, very, very, very popular even in mainstream circles easily if you, if you changed your message. People like you who are, you know, having to, like you said, having to pay for your own production and stuff like that. That just seems so messed up to me. What it is, brother, is, uh, you know, people, people, first of all, people want things for free, and those aren't real supporters. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If, like, I'm, I'm, I give things, like, the next Get Big on a mixtape, it's free. I'll always give, I'll always put out mixtapes out for free. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And that's, I do believe in that as well. Yes, okay, because I can, I, I can just put, put together mixtapes and it doesn't cost me much and for this one I'm going to have official music videos with Global Faction wow. and all of that costs, believe yeah. me and, and that's fine you know what I'm saying, but I don't have to do that all the time I could just put out a mixtape with no videos and just to have for people to have that's fine, that's okay yeah. albums, they're going to be they're going to have a price on them you know what I'm saying, because that costs more that's going to be more invested into it people wonder then, why why you know, oh, they, they want to complain about mainstream new rap music and this and that. and and But the irony of it is that I've never once heard a fan of any mainstream rapper say, Oh, what? You charging for your music? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's messed up. Oh, why don't you give a shit for free? And that's why... That's why they are, that's why they're dominant. Well, that's why because those people are so rich, they want to brag to people about how rich they are, and then have those people buy, you know, buy that message, buy that message. I'm right. richer, I have a Rolex, you don't. I have these shoes, you don't. I have this car, right. you don't. People are paying to hear that. Sure, but and, but nonetheless, those fans are, are they're supporters. And, and for, to, to, to fans of, of the kind of music that I make, if you if you want to counter that, then support. It, it support is more. Yes, of course. Share the music everywhere. That's first and foremost. And I got love for everybody who shares it, no matter what, whether you buy or not. That's huge. But yeah. realistically, if if you wanted to want these artists to keep going, you know what I'm saying? Make like support them if you can. If you can't, you can't. You know what I'm saying? But it's like why why oh and the whole oh aren't you about freedom and when did people get this idea that freedom meant free, yeah. everything for free? Yes. That's not what it means. Right. That is not what it means. And money, money, what is money? Yes, money is part of the system, and it's fiat money, and it's debt, and it's, and it's bad what it is now. But money is nothing more than a representation. 
It is something to help us exchange goods and services. When was anything for free? When did, no, it doesn't work like that. I'm sorry, people want, you want, you want, why, okay, and, and why is it okay, um, you know what I'm saying, brother? I know you feel me, but I'm asking the people, why is it okay, why does it, why don't I ever hear anybody saying to, uh, to, to organic uh, produce farmers, oh, what? You charging us for your organic food? <laughs> what about freedom? Yeah. Give, us, give it to us for free. Aren't you down for the cause? Wait a second. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Because because wait, they what you value? So you value these pe people value more the work and the time and the energy that a farmer puts in to grow his produce. What about the work and time and energy that, that artists put into what they do? That's the thing. Because within within this realm that we're in, brother, people still aren't awakened enough to, uh, to to realize the true value of art, of music. Absolutely. See, because we've been programmed, we've been programmed to, 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 to okay, that is not a tangible value. That, that It doesn't produce anything tangible. I can't eat it. I can't, what can I do? It's just music. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not. And the, and, and the power of it, and what it, what it does, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But regardless, People, regardless, should be willing to support people that are doing, really out here doing, you know what I'm saying, doing their all to make a difference. Yeah. If you support them, look, I see, because I've, and trust me, I've had people come at me, man. I have people, you know, ask me, hit me up, oh, yo, Diesel, man, yeah, you go. Can I get a feature from you? Sure. I charge for a feature because I don't know you. I don't know you, all right? You you hitting me up out of the blue. I never heard of you before. And the first thing you hitting me up and asking me for is a feature. Mm -hmm. Okay, I charge for a feature. Yeah. Why? Why do I charge for a feature? Because, for two reasons. If you're coming at me for a feature, and I, I don't know you personally, it's either A, because you really value my, 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 my body of work, mm -hmm. you really value what it is that I have to offer, or... Two, because you feel that I'm more well known and established, and you want to um, capitalize on that to, to, to help yourself, yeah. or both. Now, either way, you should be willing to, 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 to give me something in return, even if it's just because you truly value me as an artist. Because you know what? Every verse I spit, I put in 110%. Listen to the features I've done. Features with, with you know, I, people used to ask me, like, no offense to any of the rappers that I've ever done features with. There are, uh, some of them are great, some of them are good, some of them, whatever. They all have the right message. I got love and respect for all of them. But people used to tell me, yo, Diesel, why are you, do, why are you doing features with these cats who aren't as good as you? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's not how I think. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. People ask me that. And I did all these features for free before. Believe that. Yeah. And you know what? Because they had, I did it because they had the message, and I believed in them. You you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And and because we built a relationship, like when I first started off, these were cats on YouTube, and we talked, and we built. You know what I'm saying? Listen to any of those features I did, and if if if, if on any of those features, anyone could say that, oh yeah, he he didn't even he half-assed it. He didn't give his all. No. On, on a feature, it doesn't matter who I'm with. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know how to not give 110. percent I don't know how. No, that comes I across. I haven't heard you not give 110 percent ever. Any, even in some of those I ones with. I don't know with, how to tone it down. Yes. I don't know how to take it a notch down yes. and just half-ass it. I don't yeah. know how. Yeah. So, or, or if you get in a verse from me, basically it's going to be the same level as my verses for my albums and my mixtapes. That's just how I do it. Yeah. So I'm putting, I'm putting, this is, I'm putting my all on it. So, and what does that say? And, and then you want to, and then these people want to question me. Wait a second, question yourself. If you're not willing to, 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 to give, to, to give something in exchange, it's not what that, what does that say about you? What does that say about you? You obviously don't respect me then. You don't, you don't value what I do. Yet you have the nerve to ask me for a feature and I don't even know you? Come on, man. See, this this is the type of thing that gets me heated because it's not even about the money. It's not even about the money. 
I had one cat, he asked me for a feature. I didn't hear from him forever. Fine. He comes back. I don't I didn't get into I didn't long story short, the guy got an attitude with me. He was still willing to pay for a feature. I said no. Because I'm not feeling it now. Yeah. I don't need your money. Yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't it's not about that. You understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Jordan? Yeah. Like I don't I don't I'm not trying I don't I I'm not trying to sound a certain kind of way. But it's like people don't want to why why is it all on me or us as artists why is it why is it if, if, if we want to make some kind of money from what the hard work that we put in just to even just to be able to keep funding our operation you know our activism why is it on us what why does that say what does that say about the people who are not willing to so so you 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 just you would just you would just have me give away everything, and, and you know it's like what kind of mentality is that? You would have me you would have me give away. You, would you have me go broke and be living on the streets just so I could keep pleasing you? Is that what it's about? Because that's what it sounds like from my perspective. Mm -hmm. When people take that approach, it sounds very entitled, very selfish. And, and very ignorant, not understanding what goes into all of this. You know what I'm saying? Not understanding not only the energy, the work, the money, the, the, the risks, the sacrifices that some of us take. You feel me? Yeah. And, and, and on top of that, I just need to get I just need to give it all away. Just I'll just give everything away. And I'll keep doing it until I absolutely financially run myself into the ground to where I can't I can't I can't even do shit anymore. And then, and then in the end, you know what? That'll be on me again. And they'll say, oh, look at Diesel. He gave up. He's backing down. He said he'll never back down. He's backing down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah. No, there's activists out there that are already going through that. Right. So, I mean, it's, you know, I live it. Look, I will never, I, I, I buy people's, if I believe it, I'll give you money. That's, see, that's the thing people don't, people don't understand, man. It's not that money's bad inherently. It's it's look, we could we could exchange goods and services. We could you know what I'm saying? It's about appreciation. It's about value. It's about respect. I guarantee you, Drutter, the same people who have a problem with paying a dollar for a single or, you know, ten dollars for an album, those same people and then and then who will say, Oh, freedom and, and this and that, you think those same people on occasion Aren't taking a dollar and going and buying a, a Big Mac. Exactly. They're not taking ten dollars and going and going buy and going and I don't know seeing a movie or something else. Or twenty bucks to have Lil Wayne tell them you know how rich he is off of them, and then you yeah. know then the oh the new Diesel song's out. Do I have fifty cents? Mm, no. Right. And in fact, I don't even have fifty cents for him, but I'm going to actually hate on him for asking for that fifty right. cents. Yeah. So Damn. you know that's. I'm gonna always give music for free, and when I put out an album, it's gonna be a digital. It's gonna be available for digital download for sale and physical copies for sale. Nice. Physical copies will be a little more expensive, naturally. Yeah. Regardless, and anything that any any music that I sell, hey, you don't want to buy it. You don't have to buy it. You could you could find a way to get it for free. Go ahead. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I I don't care what what people are gonna say about anything. But I could, I could really care less about the people who, who are going to try to take some holier-than-thou approach. You know, like, oh, you're trying to make money off of... Okay, because like I said, what do you do to make a living? What exactly do you do? Tell me, please. You know, if I were to a able to make a living from my music and from a, as an activist, how is that not a beautiful thing? I hope how that's what happens. How is that not a honest, a honest, positive, good way to make a living? Exactly. Strictly by people saying, "Hey, Diesel, we believe in you. Hey, Drutter, we believe in you. We believe in you. We support your message. We want you to keep going. Here's here's money. We're gonna buy your stuff. We love you. We love your message." You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. It's what you do it's, well, and it's what you love you know what? doing. So if you could do that and have your bills paid, wouldn't that be amazing? Right. Because you know what? We gonna ha we have to make a living anyway. So why why I don't under you know it boggles my mind that people don't understand this, or they either don't understand it or just 
don't have never even been presented with this perspective on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? The fact is, we all have to make up money, have to live somehow. As far as the money goes, I just would like to be able to get enough to just keep putting back into the music. But even to make a living, I don't care what anyone says, brother, because the fact is, you know what I'm saying, I know that to make an honest living, truly honest living from from the support of the people through my music and activism is way better than any other way of of, of making of making a living. I want people to, to, to wake up to the reality because the fact is if it's just it's like anything when you look at the economy, you know, if for example, if if we wanted American economy to thrive, if more people started buying American products, keeping them, or or even on a smaller level, buy locally, within your community, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Don't go to the big, don't go to the big stores, right? Then your local community economy would flourish. Buy American, you know, then American, and all of that, right? So the same could be applied within the micro, within this microcosm, you know, of of of, of activism. If people would, would just buy and keep spending their money within circles of activism and supporting one another, you know what I'm saying? It would only provide for the movement to flourish even more. Mm -hmm. Because more people would have more money, more to invest, bigger movements would form. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you need money, period. Bringing money I'm into that into sort that. of other, you know, away from the system and into the more into the cause kind of thing. And the more right. money that's and within I that cause, it'll strengthen it. Of course. And no matter what, you were using money, so you're still, you were still obviously contributing to the system. But, yeah. but we ha you have to. We have to. You have now, to yeah. use it. Yeah. Where are you going to use it? Where are you going to spend it? That's the question. It's really not about, like I said, if it was about the money, man, I, I would be, I would be, on a whole nother, uh, in a whole nother genre of, of music, so. Yeah, well, I think that is what happened with a lot of other rappers that maybe could have done something different and ended up just towing the corporate line and, you know, being materialistic and stuff. I think maybe some of them could have been diesel automatics or, you know, revolutionary rappers and ended up just not going in. So it's, it's a good thing for us, I think, and for the cause that you ended up where you are now. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I mean, you know, Vinnie Paz, for example. I mean, I know a lot of people, a lot of people love the guy. And he's a very talented rapper. And he, you know, he spits, you know, he's got songs that are, that are, uh, you know, they got knowledge in them and, and you know, facts, whatever, you, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, but then you flip to another song on his album, and he's talking about bashing a metal spike through some homo's head. Yeah, that's something that I can't, uh, I can't, I can't condone. I guess, like, I can't. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't, I don't see how that, or even like, oh yeah, you know, like, like people want to talk about Eminem, like, oh Eminem's Eminem, yeah, revolutionary. What? <laughs> Hold on, man. Like, that's the thing, though. People don't. Some people are just, are, are barely, like, scratching the surface. There's layers to this, you know? And I understand, but, like, some people are, are just barely, have barely broken through the surface. That reminds and me of something I saw the other day when I was at a, on a, some kind of a hip-hop um, channel or something, and they had a rap there, and <clears throat> one of the comments, it actually was the top comment, was, it's so good that there's rappers out there putting out alternative messages like this and you know the message was just so weak and watered down and it was just not it was nothing i didn't even recognize it as a positive message even when i heard it but these people were all jumping on board you know like wow it's good that there's rappers out there that are doing that. i felt like saying i can't comment on youtube anymore because i don't have oh, yeah. the um google, google plus. plus account but i felt like saying have you heard of diesel automatic you know like i can give you some links oh. you know these people are all excited about really nothing and I think people are hungry for that other message and um, even when they so find a tiny the, tidbit of it they just get excited what was the what was the song do you remember I can't even remember it? what song it was it was it was more mainstream than anything else but it was just had a little bit of positivity in it and people were right. really jumping on board on that yeah yeah I mean and, and you know that's cool I mean I'm not saying you know uh, someone to put out a little bit of positive but but at the same time it's like 
you know, people want to say like, oh, well, isn't it better to just, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, you know, you have artists like the Kanye West who put out this album, New Age, New Slaves, or I don't yeah. even know. And he's, you know, he's got the one song he talked about, like, private prisons. And that's yeah. all cool and everything. But at the same time, like, then in all of your other songs, you're, all you're doing is promoting um, capitalism and consumerism, materialism. So, yeah. you know, which, which in turn prompts young, influences young men to want to, to, to garner as much material stuff as they can by any means necessary, mm -hmm. which includes, you know, doing um, criminal activity uh, in order to acquire the money to buy these things. And they end up in the for-profit prison. prison. Yeah. Yeah. And if people think that that's not a fact, they need to, they need to check themselves because yeah. that's how the fuck it goes. Yeah. Rap music influences people. You know what I'm saying? All music influences people. I'm, and I'm, you know, I see this guy, this uh, this rapper the other day on Twitter. Uh, his name's Bob, B-O-B. -B, like, and he's had stuff in the past, like some sem like conscious. He's even said stuff about Illuminati. I don't even know. But he makes a tweet like, oh, pop pop culture isn't responsible for raising raising your kids. Okay, all right. It's not. You're right. Because pop culture's responsibility is to is to promote materialism, consumerism, and to push the corporate agenda. That's pop culture's responsibility. Yeah. And aside from that, if you're aware of something, sure, it's not your responsibility. But let's all take that. Let's all take that fucking mind state, right? What the world be? It's where it's at now because no one wants to take responsibility. And it's one thing if you don't know. If you don't know better, then you cannot take responsibility because you don't know better. But if you know, if you know what you're doing, if you know that your music is influencing these young kids, this impressionable youth, and you're not taking responsibility for the words that come out of your mouth and you lack morals, then you're immoral. And what does that say about you? What does that say about us? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you could, people could try to justify their bullshit all they want. Oh, we don't have to take responsibility. Yeah. Good. If that makes you sleep at night, good, brother. But, but it's, not, it's not right. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know any better, but a person like Bob, from what I, B.O.B., from what I've heard of his music before, he knows better. But you want to, you want to, now you're making all this money, and now, now, oh, now you're not responsible. Sure you're not. But what are we really responsible for in this world then? What? Who, who are we responsible for? We, we can all take that approach. Let's all just, I'm not responsible for shit. I don't have to worry about anybody but myself then. Mm -hmm. Right? Great. Okay. <laughs> so... You understand what I'm saying? And then, you know, you got all these all these rappers, man, and, and, and like a Kanye, he wants to do that. And, but but you might have this little message, but you 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 you're countering it. You know, you you it's getting outweighed by all the ne all the negativity that you're spewing. Big time. You know what I'm saying? It's getting you know like stick to the script, man. You're talking about shooting people and killing people and and, and beating people up. A lot of a lot of sexist remarks, misogynistic, yeah. homo ho uh, hatred of homosexuals. I don't even like the word homophobia because what does that mean? Oh, we're, I'm scared <laughs> of gay people. I, yeah. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. But you know, hatred of homo like I, I just like you know on certain issues of like sexism and of course I mean racism goes without saying, but that's you know, but like sexism is one that's so so overlooked. And it's so prevalent in in, in, in society, and, and oh, yeah. our whole our whole world is 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 is, is built on on sexist and misogynistic notions. I mean, patriarchy yeah. is is what dominates the world. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I, I I'm getting a lot more into, and it's really fascinating stuff. And my sister put me on to a lot of it as well, um, and. Um, I, I, I strongly urge all of the listeners to, to really, because I guarantee you, if you, once you start to get into it, you, you put the pieces together to why, you know, it, it's all inter, it's all interrelated, as you know, Jordan, I mean, you can't, we can't, we, you can't separate all of these different aspects throughout history that have, have contributed to, to, to why the system is the way it is, right. and you know, Besides, like, honestly, most of my newer music is profanity-free. I'm, I'm honestly getting to a point where I, I just, I, I don't even need to use profanity. Why? Why? You know? Not to say, I don't have, I don't have anything really necessarily against um, profanity, because uh, words are, you know, certain words are like, you know, if I say 
fuck the system. You know, what am I really saying? It's just, it's it's adding it's adding emphasis. You know, it's basically I could say forget the system. Not exactly the same. Yeah, I think it has a I purpose. It has a, a place. Right, and um, and as long for me as long as 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 far as I see behind a, a curse word like fuck, there are, there isn't any underlying connotation of sexism or racism. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 neutral. It's fuck is fuck. Yeah. To me, at least, I don't know. Maybe somebody sees it differently, but uh, to me, you know. But when you start saying motherfucker or mm -hmm. bitch, yeah. then it gets a little. For me, it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit, you know, more into that to that area of uh, somewhere that I I choose not to go. So. And they don't care about us. You mentioned your parents are from Montenegro. <laughs> Please comment on your linguistic background and how does linguistic skill play a role in creating and performing rap music? I speak, obviously, I speak uh, English and uh, I speak uh, Montenegrin or Serbo Croatian, Serbian, yeah. Croatian, Bosnian. It's, uh, it's all pretty much the same language, just very, various uh, dialects or accents or whatever. So, but consciously, no, I don't, I don't, <laughs> how you, you got, this is, the, for this one, I don't have much to say, man. <laughs> well, your accent is more, uh, well, I don't know how to describe it, but it's certainly not, doesn't sound Montenegrin to me. Your accent sounds very uh, American because you grew up there, I guess, but... Yeah, yeah, you yeah, you know Montenegrin and Serbo-Croatian and did you say yeah, Bosnian yeah, as yeah. well or is that just kind of mutually intelligible? Once you know one, you kind of know the other. I mean, that pretty much, but they're the exact same. Like mm. they're the exact same language, just like little subtle, you know, nuances that are that are different. Yeah. Um, Montenegrin and, and, and Serbian are identical croatian they have some like variations to certain words just whatever bosnian it's the same it's they're the same man because it was all you know it was all yugoslavia before and then you know it split up and the language was serbo croatian with filthy uh listening to a lot of his raps i notice because he he's from the uk and he pronounces things fairly differently than i do so i notice when i'm listening to him he can rap two words he can rhyme two words together that if I or you were to try and rap them, it just wouldn't work because they don't rhyme, if you know what I mean. So just having a different accent sometimes, I guess, opens up different rhymes to uh, to a rapper. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, I think there's, I think there's, I think it goes both ways. I think in, in with the American way of rapping, there's probably things that, that you know, we could say that uh, the English, you know, my, the English mates over there, if they, if they, if they, uh, if they tried to at least with their with their accent, they couldn't do it. They couldn't pull it off the same way. Yeah. Um, but it definitely, I mean, you know, I, I think it's you know, rap was created in, in America. You know, it was created in, in, in with the English, particularly American, you know, kind of street slang language. Um, so yeah, of you know, I mean, not. Every language can rap, there's for sure, but like, I know in this language, Montenegrin, Serbo-Croatian, Serbo Serbian, Bosnian-Croatian, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's not, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of rappers all over, you know, the former Yugoslavia that rap in this language, but it's not the same as, because the, 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 there's not really a slang to it where, like, in English you could you could just cut words short and just, you know what I'm saying, just totally kind of mold and, and, and change a word yeah. to, to make it, you know. In, in this language, it's a lot more difficult to do. It'll, it'll just tell, like, people won't even, won't really understand what you're saying. Mm. And then there's, like, all these, there's, there's real hard sounds like ch, sh, and it's just like, I, I mean... You know, the, the rappers have no problem rapping them, but they're not exactly like the most, mm, I guess they're, they're not most, they're, they're not the best sounds, I guess, per se, to, 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 to 
formulate raps with. So I the language know, doesn't loan itself to the music yeah, it's, quite it's as well. It's not a very, you know, it's just not. I, I don't know. I get they, they might think differently. You know, I guess I'm just my my ears are biased as well. Quite <laughs> frankly, obviously, I, I grew up listening to you know English rap, American rap. So where was that video shot anyway? With the uh, the train car, I guess that was in Montenegro. Oh yeah, yeah, that was over here. Right on. So what does it mean when you talk about getting big, which you mention on almost every track? Yeah, yeah no doubt. That's uh, that's the idea that I, you know, that I had. That was the, the get big, get big on them, get big. I mean, honestly, it started. At, uh, get big started at the gym. To be quite, to be quite truthful with you, it started yeah. at the gym. Just to me, I, you know, I love the gym. I, I love working out. I love. Uh, and it taught me a lot, um, actually, because the gym is like an analogy for everything in life. It's like, you know, for the spirit and the mind and, and, and for personal growth. Like, yeah. you know, it's like we do what happens in, when, in, with your muscles is you, you when you work out, you rip, you, you tear your muscles. You know? Yeah. And, and it, you know, you're working out and you're tearing those muscles and it, it hurts, you know, but you've got to push through it. You're pushing through it. And all uh, you tear them, and then the next day is sore and, and you hurt. And but you need to, you, you got to replenish your muscles. You got to put the nutrients back in, the proteins, carbs, the, the, the fats, you know, back into your body, the vitamins, the minerals, and you know, and, and, and then they they grow back bigger and stronger, you know. And to me, it's the same way with 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 us on a on a on a personal level as people, as souls, you know, our spirit, our mind, like. We go through things in life. We, you know, we go through pain. We, we, but, but, but we get through it. We push through it. It hurts, and it, and, it, and afterwards we're sore. We feel this pain, and and uh, and. But what we do, we we have to replenish ourselves, our souls, our spirit, our minds with with uh, love, with knowledge, with um, you know, self acceptance and self love. And, and we, we feed our, our, our souls and our minds these things, and they, too, grow back bigger and stronger than they yeah. were before. And it's just kind of like, you know, no pain, no gain. I mean, I feel like I don't, I don't know very many people who have made a lot of uh, progress as, a, as an individual on a spiritual and on, on a mental level that haven't been through a lot of hardships, you, you know? Um, I, I don't, I don't know anyone who has, quite yeah. frankly. And yeah. that doesn't mean that there isn't. I mean, there could be someone who's had a charmed life, who just, you know what I'm saying, who has, uh, yeah. who has somehow still managed to grow and to to, to develop on, on a level of, of, of spirit and mind, and and that's great. But I don't know anyone of that nature. So I mean, that's a lot of growth know, comes after a, a tough period or whatever, yeah. a, a trauma. Yeah. You know, I mean, and that's just something that all, the, you know, if you look at all the great philosophers and artists and, uh, you know, throughout history, that's a common theme that they've all expressed, you know, and, I, and it's something that I've definitely experienced in my life, you know, from my darkest, darkest being down to where, and it's just, you know, to where I didn't think I would, I, I could even survive things like, you know, where I felt like I'm just going to physically just melt or, you know, to where from all of that I just did gain my greatest strength, strength I, I never thought I, I could have. I mean, um, so yeah, that's what Get Big On Him is all about, it's just growing and expanding mentally and spiritually, and that's, and that's constant, that's a constant process in life, that's, that's never ending, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That, that keeps going until the day that we die, and that's, and that's why, that's why it's a, to me it's a beautiful um, thing, and it's a, it's a slogan that I get big on them as an individual first and foremost, and then let's get big on them as as, as a collective, as as a people, and yes. grow numbers because there's strength in numbers, and you know, um, so yeah, and I mean, it's just get big is of course it's 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 a rec it's the record label too, yeah, it's uh you know um, that you know me and me and sis, uh, it's it's the record label we started. Um, you know, obviously right now we're the, we're the artists, but we got, uh, you know, a spirit, um, 
Session Smitty, V City, those are, you know, the artists that right now are, aren't on the label because we're not in a position to put any artist on the label at, the, at this point. Yeah. But they're, you know, they're the, 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 the closest, uh, the closest fam. And then, you know, of course, we have all of our associates. I mean, Global Faction is, you know, that's, you know, Get Big, Global Faction is yeah. kind of, it's kind of inseparable right there. Like, that's just, you know, that's, that's fam for real. And, you know, of course, all these other artists too, man. You know, Filthy, like you mentioned, Ghost Rider. Species? But no, nah, that's, I mean, that's my that's my brother. He's, he's dope. He's, you know, of course, he's not like the spirit in Russian Smitty and BC. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's got his, Species has his own thing, but he's definitely, definitely, you know, good people. He's a dope MC. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's what gets me. It's a movement and it's an idea. I think it's a label. And, a, and one day I will have, like, artists signed. And, you know, I'm hoping the artists I mentioned, you know, were originally a spirit, Russian Smitty, B City, uh, as a producer, that those will be the artists signed. And, and, and there will be get official get big artists. But the thing is, like, I don't, I don't want to, I, I, my, my intentions, our intentions aren't, aren't for get big to be exclusionary i guess like i don't i don't want it to just be limited to i everybody's get big to me you're get big you know uh everyone, oh. big, you know, <laughs> everyone everyone who supports everyone who you know who believes in the idea that it represents and and and, and, the, and the movement because it's bigger than music it's bigger than me it's bigger than sis and and all the artists it's it's you know it's an idea it's it's about it's a way of life and right now everything's growing i mean the universe is expanding yeah. you feel me like so it's 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 life that's 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 what it is it's a way of life and 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 i i i don't have a problem with you know anybody repping it i want people to rep but i feel honored and proud when i when I see people comment and saying "get big on them," oh, or you know anything like it, just it, you know. I mean, the guy recently, you know, got the logo tatted on his chest, right? Oh, yeah. His heart, like, I mean, that was like crazy to us. We were like, "Yo, it's so crazy to see an idea that I had, you know, in my brain years ago." develop into something that someone is now getting on their yeah. body inked permanent. on skin yeah yeah and i mean you know it's sis well sis and i together we we, we designed we came up with the logo sis designed it drew it out like and i mean just the whole thing is just is crazy so but yeah that's that's what it's all about when you're about to record or perform some lyrics how do you get into the mind frame i don't record unless i'm in in the mind frame already you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I don't like to, um, I don't like to push anything. I don't like to pressure myself into being creative. Or, you know, of course, there's times when re rarely has it happened where like I have to. I got, it's like, okay, I gotta finish this. It doesn't matter. You know, I have to do it. And then if that's the case, then quite frankly, I just. I just do it. I just put the beat on and just, you know, I mean, I've been rapping for so long, bro, that, you know, quite frankly, I, I could just, I could do it any, like, if I have to, I, right now, I could, you know, I could record a, record a verse, but... So you rap when you're in the mind frame rather than, you know, specifically trying yeah. to get into that mindset when you need to rap or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I, 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 I go for months without recording because, you know, I go, like any artist, I go through... Um, dry spells, you know, uh, it'll be either I'll be, you know, like recently I haven't been recording much because I've been, I've been training super hard these past few months. Yeah. You know, my focus right now is on training and, and, you know, I still, I've, I've, I've been recording, don't get me wrong, but not as much. Like sometimes I'll have, you know, a month or so where I record 10 songs or so, you know, yeah. it varies. Um, and I like, the most when you know when I'm just feeling it. I don't I don't you know I don't I don't like to and I don't think anyone should. That's see that's when the artistry gets lost. That's when the creativity gets lost. And that's a big part of you know why commercial shit is whack. Because most of those artists they have they're on the the, the, the 
clock. They're on the on the record label's money. They got to do what the record label tells them. Most of the artists on the labels, they're not really really creative anyway, so it doesn't really matter to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They could they could. I mean, honestly, I could go in at any time and, and, and freestyle a a, a, a a song that's about all that crap that they rap about. I could I could freestyle a song that's that, that's just as good as a, a, a fucking Little Wayne hit or any one of these crappers. I mean, there's don't get me wrong. Some of those, some of the commercial rappers, they're still talented. Yeah. You know, don't 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 get me wrong. Like the Eminem. It's not know, about that though. Stuff. Yeah, it's not about that. But like the ones who just who rap like this, uh, like a Rick Ross, like oh yeah, I'm in the club, I'm popping bub. Yeah. I mean, come on, bro. I could I could I could rap I could rap that literally, you know, freestyle better than that off the top of my head. Yeah. So I like to get that divine inspiration. You know, and let that flow through me, and just, just where does it come from? You know, yeah. inspiration. What is that? It's like to me, it's like it's going into something maybe a little bit more philosophical and spiritual. But that's that's the way I think about things. Like, because yeah. the things I rap about, okay, we know where those, that that's that's knowledge that I've acquired in my mind or whatever. But where does the actual inspiration come from? The creative that that it's an energy. You know, and all, only an artist could really relate to what that's like and what that feels like. But it's like, you know, I can't explain it. It's just when I get that, when I get that creative, just surge, that burst. It's like, I don't know. I get into a zone, and I feel like, I feel like, you know, there's not, there's nothing that I can't, that I can't do creatively. Mm-hmm. With my with my raps, I feel like there's no combination of words. Anything that anything that I want to say in a rap, I I, I, I will find a way to say it and to make it sound good. Mm-hmm. Anything like mm-hmm. that's how when I get into that, you know, I, anything you could tell you 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 could just give me something random to say. And I'll find a way to, to put it into, you know what I'm saying, into a nice rhyme form and make it sound good. Yeah. And, you know, so I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's just from years and years of experience and, you know, mastering my craft. Or if that's just something, uh, some people born with a specific a specific talent or maybe a, some characteristics that allow them to, 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 you know, excel in certain things. Or is it just... Purely just practice and will and, and drive and determination, you know. And I think, you know, it's maybe it's a combination of both. I, I, I really don't know. I, I do know that I, I've i always been good at rap since I started. I mean, from the very first time I rapped, I was, I was good. But I also know that I put in a lot of work. It wasn't just all of the freestyles that I did when I was with my crew and battling and whatever, but it was when I was at home and all I would do is listen to, to, to rap, listen, study the rappers. And and all day long, all I got going through my mind is raps. And and keeping a notepad by my bed so I, when I wake up in the middle of the night to write raps down. Mm. And just not, you know, or even later when I got older, just constantly... You know, now I'm at, I, right now I don't write my raps. I don't write them like physically. I I, I, I just memorize them as I come up with them. Wow. Or now I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have my own little home studio, so I'll just get on the, I'll put on a beat and I'll kind of just come up with the, the, the raps and just lay them a rough version down as I go. Yeah. But um, I uh, I haven't I stopped writing raps like still when I was back in the U.S. years ago, because I, I would constantly be thinking of raps, and I didn't always have somewhere to write them down. Like, I'll be at the gym doing cardio, and I'm coming up with raps, so I just found out a way to just uh, memorize them, just kept repeating over one line and then the next, and would just memorize the rhymes in my head without, you know, just not have to write them down anymore. Wow. And that's just a product of me nonstop just literally being obsessed and maybe also it's my, you know, it's it's a it's my personality too. It's like I uh, I don't know. I just always had a kind of a personality where when I set my mind to something, like I just 
I'm gonna, you know, it's all or nothing with me. Like I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it big. I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go all out with it. Like, yeah. You know, and I wanna not even to like be the best, like the competition wise, but just to be the best that I could be. You know, I never had anyone discourage me. <laughs> now that I put my music out on YouTube, yeah. And you know, maybe once in a while get a, some trolls who will say, but I've never had anyone in my life, like when I was younger, anyone say, "Yo, man, this probably isn't for you," or "Yo, man, you're you're not really that good," or. Not, no. All I ever, from the moment I started rapping, was damn, bro, you're you're good. Like, and then it went from you're good to holy shit, yeah. you're fucking, you're sick, to to holy shit, dude, you're one of the best fucking rappers I ever heard. Agreed. Like, you're gonna be, you're gonna be a star. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I, you know, this is this this was this was what people were telling me when I was you know 18, 19 years old. Because before high school, I would rap, but only like with my cousin and by myself and but then in high school you know i that was like when i when i actually stepped out and and, and, and rapped with some people and you know i'll never forget like it was uh it was my sophomore year and linked up with this with the crew one of a crew in, in in my high school you know hip-hop crew and you know i had rapped for some of my my boys and they wanted me to rap for like the head the he was, uh, you know, he was a year older than us, and he was like the head of the crew, and they wanted me to rap for him, and, and uh, you know, we, we were in his garage, and, you know, we all just got smoked a little weed, and, you know, <laughs> just zoned out and just spit a freestyle, and, and I'll never forget, like, because that was like, that's like a defining moment in my life that I'll never forget, because, honestly, if things would have went differently that day, I might not be these of automatic, yeah. because... You know, I spit the freestyle, and, you know, after that, he just was, you know, it was the first time he heard me, and he, his mind was blown, you know. Mm. Here I am, this little chubby white boy, and, you know, and I just spit this freestyle that just blew his mind, and he was like, yo, like, I think you might be as good as uh, this dude Greg, who was the best rapper in the school at that time. Mm. And that, for me, my first time rapping in front of that, you know what I'm saying, that's a defining moment. That was the moment that gave me confidence. That was the moment, I had known that I was good. Like, my my friend, my cousins, people had told me, yo, you're really good. But when the big shot, the head of the crew, you know what I'm saying, older than me, first time hearing me tells me that I'm on par with the best rapper in the school, I mean, that just, that after that there was no turning back that's confirmation you know, that just gave me the confidence that i needed and and after that it was never there was no turning back but as a youth growing up it it did two things it gave me confidence extreme com you know the confidence i needed and later in life it gave me arrogance i'm not gonna lie i did, I did at, you know at a certain point once i got older i you know i, I was arrogant i mean that's just that's that's how it went, and I'm not I'm not saying that. Obviously, I'm not proud of that. Being around my way, just kind of known as the best rapper, and you know, doing things that I was doing at that time that most people weren't doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, at my age or anything, and it just would be hard not to go to your head a little bit anyway. Yeah, yeah, it went to my head a lot. But, yeah. Hey. I know you just dropped a track with Synthesis called Judgment Day and we can link to that here. What are you working on next? And uh, I hear you mentioned a second mixtape. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, working on uh, Get Big On Em, the mixtape, which is going to, pretty, you know, similar to the previous Power to the People. Well, some of them, you know, the material that I've put out since Power to the People will also be on the mixtape, right? Judgment Day, and uh, it ain't over till it's over. Yeah. Um, but new stuff. There's gonna be the first uh, the lead single for the mixtape uh, is going to be a song called System Reboot, which features myself, Synthesis, and the Spirit. Nice. And uh, it's produced by V City. Nice. So uh, yes, it's. We're gonna have the official video with Global Faction. 
Mm. And it's going to be big. That will um, be, yeah. And then after that, there will be at least another two, possibly three official music videos for the mixtape. And the mixtape is going to be free and it's going to have a bunch of collaborations with the Get Big family and different, you know, a few different artists. Um, uh, and then just solo tracks from pretty much all of us, uh, myself, Sis, The Spirit, Russian Smitty. Probably have some a few instrumental beats on there from V City. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a a, a, a good one. I'm Definitely. looking forward to it. Uh, I, I know it, and I appreciate it. Man. Is there anything you wanted to add before we wrap up? I think I might I think I might have covered it all. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess really I just you know I want to thank you I had an interview before this but this is like my first really in-depth interview and I and I appreciate it um, and I definitely want to thank all of all of your you know viewers listeners and all of my supporters fans you know the people who just keep me going you know inspire me motivate me and just support me and my music and get big on and the movement and I mean, I just, you know, it's like sometimes I I, I just can't believe it. So, you know, I mean, I can, but I can't, you know, and I'm just, I'm just grateful for everybody. And, you know, I got nothing but big, big, big love and respect for everybody. I mean, everyone, <laughs> period, but, you know, I got to give a special big love and respect to the people who do support because I want everyone who supports to know, you know, that that you're you're a part of this. You're a part of of Diesel Automatic and of Get Big on them and of the movement. And you're you know you're a big part of it. And I appreciate you all really to the fullest. Thank you very much for doing this interview with me and for being on the channel. I hope that we can do something again. Maybe in the future, we'll see. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not everything has been said here, and we're going to have to do another interview. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could think of some more stuff. To talk about. <laughs> well, can I get you to do a live uh, rendition of a verse, maybe from "They Don't Care About Us," and maybe something else that you have coming up? Uh, no doubt. No doubt. I'll, I'll bust that one out. Right now. Um, yo, check it. The government got us trapped. We had enough of this crap. They took our freedom and I don't wear now. We taking it back. Don't gotta take it as fact. Go get the knowledge yourself. They run the education system, so college won't help. They using mind manipulation to acquire their wealth. They put in fluoride in the water to abolish our health. And the food they claim in healthy is already altered chemically. Fruits and vegetables are being modified genetically. Homegrown organic foods, obviously the remedy. But try and grow a garden and the FDA won't let it. Be. Do you know your enemy? They plans and who they posse is. Fast food, tobacco, alcohol, industry lobbyists, banks, oil, weapons, and pharmaceutical companies. They all in this together because misery's better money, P. Yeah. Yeah, so this uh, this verse, it's uh, from a track from a, song, a track off the upcoming mixtape, Get Big on the Mixtape. It's, uh, the song's called We in the Trap. It's actually a features ghostwriter and uh, produced by V City. Big up these cities, the, 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 the best producer in the world. Yeah, yeah I said it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, check it. We in the trap, not talking about the one in the street, but the one set up by the corporate elite with the monetary system, Federal Reserve, and the fiat money they print by the sheet, then lend out to our government in charge of interest rates, self-perpetuating, never-ending debts what this creates, printing money with no backing, so inflation is what happens, unlawful state of taxation is what our nation is trapped in, and all this leads to a bubble effect when they bust, expect big trouble, and yes, the people are left to pay off the debt with the taxes that the government collects. It's not complex, it's simple. User is considered simple. That's why Jesus chased out money changers from his father's temple. It's time we do the same. It's time we end the fed. It's time we bust out of this trap before we end up dead. Murder and slavery are fuel for the plutocracy. Permanent war economies, the way they build monopolies. War on drugs, war on terror. War is where the profit be. The rich keep getting richer by exploiting those in poverty. We in the trap. 
and the corporations running it. It's funded by the money that the people give the government, the trap. We in a voluntary prison. The cause of our affliction is the monetary system. Usury is a trap. Fiat money's a trap. So, well, you know, this song's newer, so I haven't really... But anyway... And yeah, when's so, the trap coming out? I'm planning to put it on a mixtape. So, yeah, it's, uh... I like it. It's a, it's a, it's a good one. And there's going to be a Global Faction video for that one, or no? I don't know. I don't know for that one. I'm not sure yet if I'm, if I'm going to do a video or not. I'm not, I'm not positive. We'll see. Well, the lyrics are pretty effect. amazing. The lyrics are definitely uh, up my alley, anyhow. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's why I wanted to bust that one out. So, yeah, brother. So we got to say thanks to all the viewers. We hope you got something out of this, out of the interview and uh, the verses that Diesel did there. And we hope that you'll share it with anyone that can use it and who would enjoy it. So check out the links below and stay tuned for much more Drutter and much more Diesel Automatic. Yes, yes. Thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure, Drutter. Thanks for being here, brother. All right, my man. Take it easy. I'll talk to you again soon. I'm a ride till I die. Look me in the face and see the fire.